Okay, let's begin. Please make yourself comfortable if you're seated. Take a moment to breathe in a slow breath through the nose and a slow breath out through the nose. And one more time, breathe in a slow breath in through your nose and a slow breath out through the nose. Bring your awareness to the sense of sound in your ears. And any sound that you hear, which might be far away, or any sound that might be close to you, listen to that sound with the sense that I am present in my hearing. I am present in my sense of listening. And prepare yourself to receive and to hear the music of the Hudson River Wind Meditations. My name is Eddie Stern. I started doing yoga when I was about 18 or 19. Um, put away my guitar and my um, screen printing equipment because I realized that yoga was my calling and I went to India um, right when I turned 21, learned how to teach yoga and came back to New York and just dedicated myself to a spiritual journey. And really that's all I've been doing for the past 35 years or so. And along the way, I've met a bunch of really interesting people. I think a lot of it just has to do with being in New York City and being at the right place at the right time. But there are a lot of amazing musicians and artists who came through my yoga school uh, in Soho. One of them was Julian Schnabel, the amazing painter and the phenomenal filmmaker. Julian did the Berlin concert series at St. Anne's Warehouse, and he invited me to come to that. And after the final show, uh, we went backstage and he said, oh, let me introduce you to Lou. And he brought me over and he said, Lou, this is Ed. I think you should do yoga with him. And uh, Lou said, I got bad knees. And Julian said, doesn't matter. He, he knows how to take care of that. So Lou gave me his number and I texted him and we set up a class and, um, I went over there, kind of like scared out of my brain, and um, we formed this great, you know, once a week yoga relationship. Tuesdays were yoga days for Lou, his day off from Tai Chi, six days a week of pushing hands and flowing with Chi, and then one day with me. I'd wait for Lou in his and Lori's living room, decorated with martial arts swords, guitars, and Lou's photographs. Lou would walk in, usually a few minutes late, and state the menu of the day. I want to stretch here, there, and the other, or 
meditation and breathing or what do you have to make my abdomen ripped he tell me about his latest regimen at the gym a new exercise machine that did all the work for you would ask what i ate for dinner or what time i got up in the morning did i do anything aside from yoga did i know mingyu or rimpache what was i reading there were always questions curiosity and openness after the questions lu would go over to the stereo and press play the meditative circular sounds of hudson river wind meditations would come on and we would begin the sounds immediately drew you into an inner flow of awareness something was happening with the music but at the same time something was happening inside of you drones have a way of doing that but not all drones are created equal and these drones seem to be based in chi in prana the sanskrit word for life force our vital breath as lu began to move with the yoga postures and began to deepen his breathing the sounds of hudson river wind meditation moved with him or perhaps just simply moved him prana is an interesting word because etymologically it means that which causes things to move and flowing movement is indeed the cornerstone of tai chi while flowing into stillness is the basis for postures in yoga the yogic texts say when the breath moves the mind moves when the breath is still the mind is still prana and mind chi and mind are one they move together they enter stillness together the stilling of the mind is the essence of any spiritual practice in tai chi one brings oneself into alignment with the flow of nature and spirit through intentional movement breath and a softness of awareness the softness that ripples through the first drones and notes of hudson river wind meditations echoes this idea of breath mind awareness and nature all emerging together from silence and drifting into a valley of almost quiet before reemerging again in an echo of what you just heard it's like lu's version of a tanpura the five stringed instrument of hindustani classical music the constant drone in the background of every composition yet lu's drone is meant to be heard as a composition in and of itself on more than one occasion and i don't know if it was true or not lu said i don't even know how i made this and i couldn't repeat it if i tried how marvelous that is to make a piece of music so profound that it can't be repeated yet has been captured for future generations to enjoy i never tire of listening to the meditations they're hypnotic for lu whether we were doing yoga or meditating the hudson river wind meditations came on and even though i am a silent meditator and don't normally recommend listening to music when meditating i would let it slide for lu when he didn't want it on he would turn it off for Three, two, one. I'm Laurie Anderson. Nobody ever talks about breath in Tai Chi, so recording something as breathy as air and wind was、um, kind of unusual. <laughs> Now that people are like, "What is this stuff? This is nothing." They're like, "Where's the power? Where's the you know? Where's the?" Grit. Where's the thing? This is just like so boring. And then you kind of sink into it. And you realize, you know, there's a lot more things going on in there than I thought at first. He recorded this music to have a、um, let's say sound bed for doing tai chi. And it does, I think, help students to do the moves because it gives you a kind of calmness that allows, I think, you to use your own energy to not to illustrate the music, but to kind of collaborate with it in a weird way.
you want to do Tai Chi, you can put this record on and, and try out some of these moves. If you're not in a right or in, let's say, a calm enough state, I think this music, let's call it music for a second, these sounds will help you calm down and help your mind stop generating thought after thought after thought after thought. After thought. These sounds genuinely help you um, let monologue go. It comes close to silence in many ways, too, because it does quiet your mind. And that is very beneficial. Your mind has to be in the same room as your body. You can listen to this record in any way you want. You can have it on in the background like Brian Eno and it will just sort of be some beautiful wallpaper for you. I use it for that. And sometimes I use it for in a more concentrated way. So, for example, in some meditations, you do some something like alternate. You would spend 60 seconds completely relaxing your body and your mind as much as you can. And then the next 60 seconds, you would focus as well and as intensely as you could on something like breath. And you would put your whole mind and body into that. And then you would next alternate with something that's very passive, resting. But it is a, a very, very 100% aware readiness. When people ask me, for example, you know, does meditation shape your work? It's not about shaping. You know, they, they're they very intertwined and they shape each other. They share the basic um, impulse and rule, and only rule, which is be aware. They don't tell you what's good or, or what's the right way to do things. Uh, the only rule is just, just open your eyes. And uh, so... Yes, they're always reinforcing each other because they're the same thing. And I think for loose music and his writing and martial arts, they were absolutely the same thing as well. You could get a lot out of Tai Chi by just putting your arms in front of you in a circle, like you're hugging a tree, and dropping your shoulders and uh, relaxing the muscles behind your eyes, especially because there's so much tension there, relaxing your jaw, letting your knees relax, slightly bending them, and hold your arms in a circle in front of you. And if you just did that for five minutes a day, you'd be a Tai Chi master in no time. One very cool and lucky thing about listening to Hudson River wind meditations with Lou was that I could look out of the window and see the Hudson, which is a huge, beautiful, powerful, sprawling river. If you've only seen the Hudson through pictures or in a movie, 
you can't possibly know how beautiful this river truly is. Traveling some 315 miles from upstate New York, the river, like all rivers, starts as a small flow and then gathers steam as other rivers and lakes feed into it. The river widens and grows as it moves towards Manhattan and finally the Atlantic Ocean. Small villages and cities populate her banks until Manhattan Island rises, vast, imposing, filled with hope, potential, dreams, risk-taking, and unabashed expression. Every corner of the city is held from east to west and north to south by the Hudson. The river divides at the northern end of the island and is then called the East River, but the East River is the Hudson by a different name. She's just wrapped herself around us, holding the island in her watery embrace. Perhaps this river is why everything flows in Manhattan ceaselessly. We exist in a continuous flow of creation, a continuous ebb and flow of the tides of people, ideas, culture, art, philosophy, values, and conflict. But underneath all of that is the steady, ever-present current of life that is what makes us alive and pulses in us like a gentle drone, the drone that Lu has so aptly captured through his meditations on Tai Chi. It's the harmony that you keep with you once you leave the Tai Chi practice room, the harmony that whispers its music after you finish your yoga practice. It's a song, and you'll only hear that song when you listen. The great rishis of India were the great listeners, as were the Tai Chi masters, Taoists, and Buddhists. They grew quiet, listened within, and brought forth teachings of tremendous beauty I think Lu did the same with these compositions. He practiced, listened, and brought forth his own teaching, one of music without words, simulating our non-logical, non-rational brain, allowing the listener to experience flow, the undulation of chi, the steadiness of prana, and the inspiration to practice. I'll treasure forever that privilege of practicing with Lu while listening to these compositions. It's a rare thing in the world to have that closeness and the sharing of revelation that the artist can have for their own creation without ego, without pride, with an equal joy to that of a new listener. What a thing of beauty, of simplicity, and childlike wonderment. Hey, this is Matt Sullivan from Light in the Attic. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Liner Notes. A big thanks to Lori Anderson and Eddie Stern for taking part. Hudson River Wind Meditations and Words and Music are both available on vinyl and CD at lightintheattic.net and at fine record shops around the globe, along with your favorite streaming service. Liner Notes is a co-production of Light in the Attic and Ruinous Media. This and all episodes of Lightning Axe Liar Notes are available wherever you listen to podcasts.